Hello there, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Docker, uh, what it is, uh, what is Docker, and also a walkthrough of some of the features. And we're going to install something called Portainer, which is a management UI that's um, web based so you can access it through the IP address in your home network. So, first uh, we're going to actually install Docker. So you can see here I'm SSH'd into one of my virtual machines and we're going to first run a command called sudo at get update and then and and sudo at get upgrade dash y like so. All the commands by the way are in the description uh, on my blog uh, so if you want the commands go to that. So we're going to press enter obviously enter your sudo password and press enter and it's obviously going to do the app get update first and then it'll do the upgrade straight after so we can leave this until it's done uh, so let's wait for it to actually So at some point you'll get this, uh, we're going to click cancel for this point, so you just tap to it and press cancel um, with enter, uh, just because I'm using SSH and I don't want to get kicked out of it. So you know that you're done when you see that our command uh, line um, actually shows up, so we're going to do control L. Next we're going to install docker with sudo at get install docker.io-y Again all the commands are in the description and we're going to wait for that. As you can see again we're just going to press tab and then go to the right and press cancel. And now docker is in actually installed. So now we're going to do control L to clear the screen so we have a nice working environment do sudo docker dash dash version if you get something like this docker version and then whatever version yours is that means it's installed but to double check we can do sudo systemctl status docker then if it says active running that means that we're good to go control L and now um, I'm going to show you basic command line uh, functions of docker so if we do sudo docker pull that basically pulls down an image so images are like ISO images uh, they're like operating systems or applications uh, so if I do sudo docker pull nginx which is obviously a web server you can see that it's pulling from the library and it's actually going to download that and extract it we can actually use that image later now if you're like me and you're not really a command line person you can install something called Portainer so um, on my website that you'll find link in the description you will find um, the commands so I'm going to find them um, right now because obviously it's not published as of yet but here we go so the first command that we're going to do is sudo docker volume create space portainer underscore data so what that is an explanation is it's the volume that portainer is going to store its data in so all of our configs username passwords etc so we press that and it returns the name of it that means that it's created Next, we're going to actually run the container. So that's the command that we're going to use. I won't explain it that much. But basically, it's going to run um, 
the port turner image with these ports attached give it a name of port turner always restart and the volumes uh, as you can see there this is a docker specific one so it can actually see the docker containers that you're running so we're going to press enter and you can see it's pulling like we saw with the nginx one so depending on your internet speed and also your hard disk speed it can take a varied amount of time but once that is done um, brilliant will get sorted and get us on the web UI and then it'll be uh, smooth sailing from the normal command line which is great so when you see a random text character there that means that it's deployed to check that we can do sudo docker ps and as you can see the port uh, instance has been up for seven seconds then are its ports here the status of it when it was created the command that it uses the image that it uses and the id of the container so that means now that it's actually starting up so what we can do is actually go uh, on our web browser so let's do that and type in the IP address now if you don't know the IP of your server simply go into your SSH and do host name dash and then capital I now there, as you can see mine is 10.0.0.30 obviously yours will be different so don't copy mine because it might not work for you unless it's a wild coincidence that you have the same IP so we're gonna obviously type it in so we're gonna do https colon double forward slash 10.0.0.30 and then colon which is a port 9443 press enter you'll get a connection not private just go to advance and then proceed to the site and as you can see we're greeted with a username and password field so I'm going to enter one right now. You obviously need to make sure it's a strong password as it is going to host some of your applications. I'm going to untick that because I don't want anything to be sent. And I'm going to click create user. Now we're on the uh, environment wizard. So we're going to click get started. Done. Portain is installed. And now we're fine. So this is Portain, a community edition. You'll be able to see that in the logo at the top left and at the bottom here. Which basically means some of the features, such as obviously change window, so it'll do updates in a certain amount of time, is a business edition feature, which you have to pay for. You actually get five nodes, so nodes are like uh, different docking uh, instances for free, but we're not going to be walking through that today. So you can see I just went onto the containers tab. So we're on dashboard. If we go on dashboard here, you can see we've got one container, a volume to support that container, two images, three networks, and zero stacks. So first we're going to take a look at the images section. So you can see that the Nginx image that we pulled before is here. So we're going to actually deploy an nginx container now if you want to deploy an image such as heimdall for example you're going to have to pull the image first so you enter it here and then pull the image but all the images are located on hub.docker.com so you can search for example minecraft for a minecraft server and then if you look here the minecraft server with a selectable version and then you have something called environment variables, which we will go over in another video, not this one. As I, as I said, there will be three videos. Um, and you would pull that here. So let's go into containers and click add container. So we're going to give it a name. So if I do test container, like so. And then the image is going to obviously going to be Nginx because we pulled that. So you can see here, manual network port publishing. If we click publish a new network port, the host I'm going to put as 30,000. So that's what you're going to be able to access on the host. In the container, we want it to be 80, which is HTTP. 
Now you can set them both the same. But for example, if I put this application on 30,000, I cannot then deploy another application under 30,000, so I'll have to put it as 30,001, for example. So just bear that in mind. If we scroll down again, we've got a lot of um, a lot of different options. I usually do interactive and TTY. We've got a volume section, so you can map an additional volume. Use additional very wisely. It does uh, map a volume for you by default. But if you want to click bind and buy it to bind it to a host directory, you certainly can. And on network, um, there's only one network right now that we're going to use. It's called Bridge. Uh, you can give it a host name. So I'm going to put test container, the host name. So that'll just bridge to the home network. Uh, a bit like something off Proxmox. You can set an IP here. Don't worry about that. Uh, environment variables, like I said for minecraft servers and certain things that you want to be defined such as your username and password on wordpress for example labels we don't need to worry about them restart policy i always recommend doing to always um, because if you stop the container it will completely remove the container and wipe it out of existence well when you click the restart policy as always it means that it will obviously stay here no matter what which is great. Runtime and resources um, is basically like resource limitations um, and you can actually pass through a GPU and use a GPU as well. Um, but we're not going to worry about that today. Uh, capabilities you can leave them at default but if you want to for example give it permission to have a sysadmin uh, privilege you can certainly tick that there. Access control, we can leave that at default or we can turn it off. I'm just going to leave it at default for now. Um, but that's it. If we click deploy, we're going to say deployment in progress and boom, like that, we've got a website. So if I go to 10.0.0.30 and then call on 30,000 that we specified, as you can see, welcome to Nginx. Super quick as well. I can refresh loads of times and it's brilliant. That's it. Um, I'll demonstrate again. If I create a new one, test two, engine X, select a port. You can do this really, really quick. You can do it in a Docker Compose YAML. Um, so if we click deploy and then do the IP again, boom, we've got another one. And if I stop the first one, click stop, you can see that infinite loads, but this one's still online. And it says refuse to connect. Let me boot that back up. As you can see, it's back online straight away. So you can see it's a really uh, quick um, deployment of applications. Uh, you can actually deploy um, Ubuntu, but I'm not going to show that today. I'm going to leave that for the next video to keep you intrigued. Um, so yeah, thanks ever so much for watching this video. Hope to see you on the next video. Uh, where I'll be walking through what stacks are, uh, looking at some of the app templates in Portana, the networking aspect of Portana, and much more. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.